Welcome to a very special episode of TFL Talking Trucks because I'm on location, I'm in Texas, and this is the introduction, the world debut of the brand new Tundra. And I have the man, the chief engineer behind this truck uh, for 2022 Toyota Tundra, Mike Swears. It's nice to nice to be here. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I don't know if I'm the man. I had a great team that, that helped put this together, but uh, I am the guy when things go wrong, they blame. So. <laughs> So, well, but you, you take all the success and all the blame. I, I, I yes. <laughs> oh, for the most part. <laughs> for the most part. No, uh, but but you've been a friend of the show for many, many years because, you know, together, I mean, you've been working on Toyota trucks for how many years? Uh, I've been chief engineer for 12 years now. Yeah, that's quite a, a few years. So so now uh, we're in, you're introducing the brand new generation of the Tundra. And so I wanted to start uh, this show uh, well, first of all, you know, as a walk around and kind of feature um, behind the scenes explanation, but also just to learn as much as, as possible about behind the scenes of what it took to develop this truck. So do you want to start like with the chassis and the frame and yeah, yeah, let's yeah. let's go take a look at the truck. There is a lot to talk about. All right. And if we start with with the platform, what we call the truck platform is really your rolling chassis all right? that's underneath there. Um, that development, uh, I went to Japan with 42 other guys um, for two years to help develop this. And the reason we sent 42 people over there is to develop a new global platform. So this isn't just Tundra's platform, this is our new F platform. And we took three different platforms and combined them into one. And when it started out, they said, oh, you know, take take charge of this, get the groups from different regions together, let's make one platform that we can interchange components on and uh, that will meet these different market needs and that, and it sounded like, well, this is a great idea, I can't wait to get into it. It wasn't that easy when you start getting into all the requirements. So you mean like Toyota trucks from around the world, so like the Hilux in Australia and the Tundra here, that's what you're talking about. Oh. A absolutely. So we took the best parts of the platforms we already have and we put it into one platform and then improved upon it. And what I mean by that is like the towing capabilities of Tundra. Tundra is our towing machine in Toyota. Uh, we think it, and we might be a little biased, but we think it's the best capability for any pickup truck for towing. It, it gives you the most stable platform. And we took the king of the off-road Land Cruiser capabilities, and we put those together and made a platform that I can use on Land Cruiser, I can use on, on this truck, many other vehicles. And it allows us to be able to interchange powertrains for different regional needs and, and drive lines and uh, you know mix things around. It, it's really uh, an awesome uh, platform. The challenge of it is, the big challenge for me is, I've always promoted our open C frame. And uh, we, the current generation truck, we use a fully box up front, we use a reinforced C in the rear, and we use an open C in the in It's the almost rear. like the tri design, right? Yeah, the, it's, the we call tri it triple frame. track frame, right? Yeah. The reason behind that is a pickup truck to be a good ride quality on road and have, be very capable off road needs some compliancy. So I always gave the, the explanation, it's kind of like a 747. 747's wings, you know, uh, move around, um, 28 feet and if they're rigid they bust off when they're in the air. Uh -huh. A pickup truck's the same way. We've got a, a, a torsional bending and a bending in the center and that's why the box is always separated and that helps you on road of giving you absorbing some of that energy and giving you a better on road uh, capability but off road that keeps you from that wheel lift that you see. You know uh, there's a lot of SUVs that uh, have uh, monocoque or, or unibody designs super good on road, you take them off road and your wheel is three feet in the air, yeah. right? The goal for off road is keep all down. So we had this great platform and when you put an SUV on it, you can't have an open seat, you need that box. And you have a D pillar and it helps set that whole vehicle up. But on a pickup truck, when you go fully boxed, you lose your ride and handling out of it. And to make up for that, we changed the rear on it to a multi-link suspension. And this is standard on all of our trucks. It isn't, you know, you buy high grade, you get multi-link. No, all of our trucks have multi-link rear suspension. And the reason behind that, uh, my challenge to, the, to our chassis guys, our engineering team is, 
okay, we're going fully boxed. And not only did we go fully boxed, we increased the front rigidity 20% and the rear rigidity 10%. You know, where's that energy going? When you put that input load into the truck, where does that energy go? Mm -hmm. We have to do something because a leaf pack, you know, I, I guess the way I'd put it is, you ever talk to somebody and go, yeah, it rides like a truck. Well, why does it ride like a truck, right? Right. It rides like a truck because I have payload in here or I have a trailer like this beautiful Airstream mm -hmm. and that loads that truck up and I need those springs to still have some dampening when it's fully loaded. You don't want to be sitting on the bump stops. Well, when they're empty, where's the energy go? So the great thing about our multi-train suspension is we have coil springs in it now and they're dual stage coil springs so I can change the spring rate depending on the load condition and, and having that, that, that dual rate spring in there it gives me the ride and handling I, I, well I'm just gonna say it I think it's best in class ride and handling of this new truck loaded or empty now the, the other challenge that, that the engineers ran into is well how do you stop body roll then so we push the shock absorbers out, but that can only do so much. So we put torsional arms across them and uh, to help with that body roll in the suspension. So as we were looking at it, they truly accomplished the, goal, the, the challenge I gave them. You know, they spent two years working on this of how to make a pickup truck not ride like a truck. And sometimes in a truck, sometimes the front is doing one thing and the rear is doing something else. Oh. So you can kind of tell, but, but you're saying you're working to kind of make it a holistic approach a yeah. absolutely and that does happen or we call kick out you know yeah. if you ever drive down i-94 and you start hitting all the potholes and and you've run in a pickup truck and the back ends all over it's dancing all over it's because there's no place for the energy to go and your frame can be too rigid and then that sounds strange but it can be too rigid so as i mentioned there's a a bending a torsional bending and there's a bendings in the center of this, mm -hmm. you want the torsional frequency of the frame and the bending frequency frame to be separated and you want them to be at a certain level. And we spend a long time looking at frame designs, building things up, testing it to find that what we think is the, the secret sauce to make this truck, and each truck's a little bit different, have that on-road characteristic you want without losing any off-road capability. Okay, so let's mention uh, the specs really quick. So the maximum uh, payload spec on the t brand new Tundra is uh, 1,940 pounds of payload, and the maximum towing is 12,000 pounds. That's correct. And that's with your kind of a standard base power plant. That's correct. Um, so, uh, so those numbers are, are good numbers, and they're improvement, right, over what was there before. Uh, but but they're not class leading. So if you look at some of the other competitors, you know they may be uh, advertising you know higher payload numbers or higher towing numbers. So what was uh, some of your philosophy here? We played the cap capacity war before when we la when we launched the the uh, first generation Tundra. We tried to play that that war, and our competition recalculated their numbers three months after we launched and we weren't class leading anymore my comment to the engineers I want to play that game you know we were first to adopt SAA G2807 the towing standard mm -hmm. we did that in 2011 my competition didn't do that to almost 2020 even though they were on the committee that wrote the standard mm -hmm. in Toyota I'm not allowed to play in gray zones what we tell you is we tell you is really what we've tested we know it works so my whole challenge to the team from the beginning is I'm not after numbers I'm after capability how do I make the most capable towing machine and what I mean by that is when I put a max load trailer behind here this isn't it but if I put a max load behind this and I'm driving up Davis Dam I'm driving um, on a level surface, a slight grade, broken concrete, dirt road, is the truck confident and natural in its driving performance? And what do we mean by confident and natural is, do, am I just steering the truck and, and uh, the truck is doing its thing, or do I have to drive this truck? And uh, I've driven all my competitors. I can tell you stories about them, but I won't. <laughs> okay. But I know exactly the point where they reach what I would consider their maximum towing before you have to start driving the truck. 
And what I would say is at maximum load, you're not driving the truck. The truck is still effortless. And, and the goal, my goal is how do I take that guy who tows all the time and enhance his experience? And then also the guy who, you know, is a weekend warrior, maybe tows once or twice a year, and he doesn't have to be white knuckled as he's towing. It's, it's an effortless experience for him, loaded or unloaded. And that's our philosophy. That's my philosophy mm -hmm. about how do we set our towing. 12,000 we feel is, is good. Our average customer tows about 8,000 pounds. So we're giving them a lot of margin in there. Uh, I've towed 12,000 pounds several times with this. And again, can I drive without putting a lot of effort into driving and controlling the trailer? So you've upgraded, you know, what did you touch? Uh, the axles, the hubs, the frame? Everything. You've touched everything? Everything. Every part okay. is new. So I've got a new rear diff assembly. Okay. Um, I, we widened the back of the frame up to help th with the stability of that. Uh, we've got new wheels. We've got new tires. We've uh, changed our braking system. Uh, we changed our electrical platform. Um, we don't change often, but when we do, it's, it's a wholesale <laughs> change, right? Uh, so, so, you know, there's a lot of going on in, in the truck. And every, all the, the features and the things we put in the truck is really to try to promote that, uh, that ownership. You know, how do you enhance an owner's experience? How do you meet their needs? Not what is the, the feature of the week type club. So let's talk about the bed and then move on to powertrain. How about that? Because we're here. That'd be great. We're here. So uh, first of all, you have a composite uh, bed now on the yep. Tundra. And then you have different bed lengths. So you can have a shorter double cab uh, with an 8.1 foot bed, right? Yep. 6.5 foot bed. Now when you get to the crew cab, this crew max, um, you have a 5.5 and, and a 6.5. All of those are composite? All their, everything's composite. So why did you not choose a steel or a aluminum bed material? Well, when we started looking at redesigning the truck, um, we had a customer that put a million miles on the truck. And maybe maybe some of your viewers have, have seen some of the stuff. You, you and I showed it actually yeah. on our channel. Yeah. And uh, there was a million miles on this truck. And honestly, I was shocked how great the truck looked. Um, I was interested in looking at the front seat because uh, the owner actually spent a lot of time in the seat. He told me he spent more time sleeping in the seat than he actually did driving. So from a seat construction, I'm like, oh, this thing's got to be just broken to pieces. And it was actually in pretty good straight sh shape. One of the things we saw was our bed was beat up. And you saw it, it was beat up pretty bad. So as we started looking at it, and especially I live in Michigan, if I scratch or I dent or or break the e-coat surface on my deck, I have corrosion. And if you don't get after it, you know It'll how get it worse, right? right? And so we looked at that, and one of our goals of this truck is, how do we reduce the, the mass of it also? So we looked at what our competitors done. You know, there's high strength steel, there's aluminum. Tacoma, we use composite. And we decided composite because we think it's the most durable solution to what our customers throw at a truck. So it's lighter than steel. It's uh, more durable than aluminum. We've all seen the bed wars that are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but the great thing about it, it doesn't corrode. So even the under supports of this are aluminum that are sitting next to composite, so there's no dissimilar metals in there. You don't have any galvanic corrosion going mm -hmm. on. And we can make a deck that's corrosion free, that doesn't dent. And if you do damage your deck, just like a Tacoma, you know, you, there, you can patch it up and spro throw a little spray paint on it, it looks like brand new again. So we think this is the best solution. Can we walk over to the other truck? Um, oh, let's go look. I want to open the tailgate. Um, so you mentioned Tacoma. So it's a similar composite than Tacoma? It's a, the latest lighter weight composite as Tacoma. Okay, I gotcha. And so uh, first of all, I want to show how you can open the tailgate. Okay. So let's, let's show that really quick. Because some of them have these hi this hidden button, right? Yes. Was this your idea? No, I wish it was my idea. So, you know, I'll tell you where that came from. So, we have a dampened tailgate. And one of my complaints of the current truck, my own truck, being a truck owner, is I, if I got my hands full on that, I, I got to come back here, I got to pull the handle on the tailgate. My request is, I want a key fob on it. Okay. And our, our engineer who's in charge of locks and that came back and goes, hey, I got an idea. 
And he goes, this is from my own truck experience. He says, I, I don't like the key fob thing. And I said, well, that, that's not a choice. I want a key fob. He goes, okay, but listen, listen, hear me out. He goes, if I'm carrying my cooler, I got to set it down. I got to pull the key fob out. I got to hit the key fob. Yeah. And he goes, I might as well walk up here and hit the tailgate and open it up. He goes, I ain't saving anything. And I'm like, yeah, but you can do it farther back before you open it. He goes, yeah. He goes, but I got an idea. And he had a little mock-up in on the side. And he goes, how about if I'm carrying a cooler and I come up and I can hit it with my elbow. And now I put the cooler in there. And I'm like, genius. You know, <laughs> yeah, a great idea. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is the difference of when you're working with truck guys. It's not, you know, I'm making a truck. It's I'm making a truck that serves my needs, that meets me my needs as a customer. And it is a lot of fun to work with an engineering team that aren't just engineers, they're customers as well. So at times it's a little bit uh, of a heartburn because they have different opinions than I'd have yeah. and we have some good discussions about it, but I think it makes a better product. I, I have one question about the bed uh, before we move on to powertrain. Um, one thing I've noticed in other trucks um, is that the surface may be slippery. Yep. Um, and I, this is kind of production ready, right? This this, this is of... this is a production ready bed. What do you have? Do you have a solution for the uh, the, the slip? I'm glad you asked that. So, current Tacoma, we we offered a solution of a bed mat. You can put oh, a bed mat. In. Yeah. And the great thing about the composite is, it's wonderful from a durability from a corrosion. It's a little slippery when it gets wet. So we have a spray in. Uh, component that can be put in there or a bed mat so an additional sp sp spray in okay yep it's a light film that puts on there it it's creates traction on it um, it's like having a bed liner in the truck without having a bed liner in the okay. truck okay. bed liner spray in bed liner right. I mean. uh, gotcha. or we have a bed mat because some customers don't prefer it like they a want, rubberized right. something rubberized right okay some customers want the slipping slipperiness to slide whatever they they're they're putting in the back of their bed so we offer two solutions cool uh, let's talk about powertrains. Um, maybe we should walk over here. Awesome. To, to see the front, to see the front of the truck. So you mentioned about discussions, different discussions happening with the team. Um, tell me about the powertrains and because you went to turbochargers all the way. Yeah, first look at this beautiful color. Is this not gorgeous. This is the Platinum, correct? This, this is the, the Platinum. This is the Platinum model. Yeah. And, and we have two different powertrains and, the, and the, the thought process behind the powertrain is how to enhance our torque. So you know well being in trucks, torque is king. And uh, horsepower is nice, but torque is really what you need to tow, haul, go off-roading. Get going Get, off the stop. Right. So especially, you know, you're climbing a rock face and some people, you know, it's a lot of RPMs that you're trying to, to keep it in the torque band. So my request is, how do we get more torque out of what we're offering? What's our offering gonna be to get more torque? And the other is, how do we improve our fuel economy? I heard everybody complaining about Toyota's fuel economy. Um, I'm a truck guy, so I don't really pay much attention to the fuel economy. I'm all about the power that's coming out. So when I want to do right, the yeah. capability of the truck itself. Yeah. So we looked at that. And we looked at several different options, and I won't say all the things they, they came, we came to, but the big offering they came to me with a V6 Turbo. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not sure about this. And uh, I said, can we get more torque out of it? And I said, it has to at least be the same as our current uh, 5.7 V8, but I need more. It's a new engine, a new power plant. New generation, more. yeah. Right. So they amped it up. And the, the great thing is, you know, a torque curve looks like this, and uh, when you turbo it, you can flatten that torque cur cur curve out. I love diesels. I love diesels because that torque curve is really super flat. And low. And I mean, it comes in soon. Comes right. in soon. Yeah. So really, how do you simulate the diesel? And the difficulty with diesels in North America right now is uh, we, we had some, some oopsies uh, from some of my competition with certification and now the government's really strict about the certification. So not only do you have to pay for the extra emission systems that are on there, but it's a three year certification process. So we, we looked at it in understanding, you know, I want the torque of a diesel, I want the speed of a, a, a ICE engine, what do we do? And we came up with this, this wonderful smaller displacement 
V6 diesel, or, uh, gas engine, but it's twin turbo. And using the twin turbo, I can make this nice flat torque curve coming across can at 2400. Can we pop the hood, by the way? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's look at it. So the torque curve was key, right? So the torque saying, curve was key. So, so this is this is the Max. So this is the iForce Max, which is your hybrid. This is our hybrid engine. So you're not seeing much. You see a great, great engine cover, but well, it's beautiful, and I see the Max in, in blue. Yep. And then I have high voltage components. It looks yep. like yep. here. So let's quickly go over the specs before you can continue. So the the base engine that the truck starts with is a three and a half liter twin turbo yep. V6 uh, with 389 uh, horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. I mean, that's already, I mean, the that's, torque is way beyond where the V8 was, right? That's correct. That's correct. Um, it's made it to a 10 speed automatic. That's correct. And then this hybrid, you're basically sandwiching, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, an electric motor between the, actually the engine and the transmission. Yep. Is that kind of a simple way of That's saying it? That's a simple it? way. It, the sandwich okay. is a perfect example, you know, uh, explanation of it. We're, we're mating it before the torque converter itself, and it allows us to drive both of them together. So you can drive the, mo the MG, we call it, the motor generator, or you can drive the engine, or you can combine them together and drive them together. And that's different than any of our current hybrid systems. It's a completely new philosophy on hybrid. And the difference being is a dual motor hybrid where the motors are in the transmissions, those MGs are in transmission, is designed to get the maximum fuel economy, the maximum, you know, the lowest emissions possible. I just needed power. So we changed our philosophy based on a truck customer's wants and desires. How do you get the maximum power out of it? And for the, for the iForce Max, this is your hybrid power plant, 437 horsepower. Yep. And this is a number, when I read it, I, I didn't believe it at first, but 583 pound-feet of torque Isn't that awesome? at 2400 RPM. Yeah, exactly. So that's basically diesel numbers. That's diesel numbers. Yeah. But without the delay of a diesel, you know, a diesel, you have to build up the fuel to get the speed out of the engine. This is instantaneous. Well, because, because the electric motor. motor helps, right? Exactly. Okay. So you take that, you know, you got that, that ramp up where you got to spool up your turbos before you hit your peak torque. Now we use the electric motor to fill in that. You have no turbo delay. And then since I can run them together on the back side of that, I can add extra torque. And that's where the extra torque is coming from. And then, uh, you know, on top. So you, you put that on top. And then on the back side of that torque curve, again, I can use the MG to fill in where, where the engine's losing its torque at higher RPMs. It's, it's truly what I told them is I want, a, I want a diesel torque capability. Well, you have diesel torque capability with the benefit of instantaneous power. Got it. So I have one more question, but to ans ask that, we have to be near the back of the truck. Okay. Because the exhaust pipe comes out on the driver's side. Yes. Which puzzled me at first when I, when I first saw this, because traditionally I'm used to the exhaust pipe coming out on the passenger side over there. Um, what, what's the story Why behind this? Why did we do that? What, what's the story <laughs> behind this? So when we're developing the, the, the packaging for this, yeah, there's the exhaust pipe. When you're developing our packaging of this, we looked at uh, our new platform and everything we're, we're trying to package in there. And as you know, the transfer case sits on this side of the truck. On the driver? Yes. Okay. So we have a prop shaft, transfer case come off, you got a driver sh drive shaft that comes across there. So the, the real wonder was, okay, if I put the fuel tank in this truck in here, even with a six and a half foot deck, and you ask why we have a six and a half on decab, though, that I, I, don't drive, I don't drive a crew max because I can't deal with a five hook. Yeah. But even with the longer wheelbase, how do you get maximum fuel tank? And because your transfer case is there, because the new crash worthiness requirements, you know, the federal requirements and, and IHS SOL and that, the way we, we solve those issues to make the safest vehicle out there is we move the fuel tank to the opposite side, away from the transfer case so we can extend the fuel tank out, and we put the exhaust in this smaller area on the platform. That's not a great story, but uh, it, it really but it, comes down to packaging, packaging and making sure that we can get 
the range, and this is this is again changing our philosophy. We have the biggest fuel tank in the industry now. So what what is it? It's it, currently it's 38 gallons. Yeah, right now. Yeah. And we changed the tank to a 32 gallon tank. And the reason the 32 gallon tank is be able to drive fully loaded, so your maximum towing, for four hours straight without stopping. So we have much better fuel economy than we had before. I don't need 38 gallons to accomplish that. And we reduce that because fuel is weight. Weight is reduced mileage and capability. Yeah. So it wasn't about how many gallons can I put in, it's about how far can I go. The range. Right. So the goal is can I go from Traverse City or from Ann Arbor to Traverse City without stopping to put it in Michigan terms. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. From Colorado, I understand those terms because to go from Denver to Grand Junction, long distances, you know, you have yep. to cross uh, vast expenses. But you haven't published your fuel efficiency yet, have you? We have not. Okay. We have not. We're, okay. we're actually in the certification process right now. I may have a m number in my mind, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay, so, but maybe later you'll tell me. Later, later we'll tell you yeah. when, when we are in agreement with what we're going to turn into the government. Gotcha. And the truck will be on sale this year, 2021? Yep. Okay. And it's built in San Antonio? San Antonio. Okay. Great plant. Right uh, down here, here in, in the Dex Heartland, in Texas. Texas. Yeah. Yes. So so now I kind of get the exhaust pipe. But you you know, on the previous TRD Pro, you had it coming out dual. We had dual exhaust pipes um, on there. I guess we can look at that well, now. Let's, let's go look. That's a transition, right? That's a transition. <laughs> so um, tell me also about the suspension because you have regular suspension you have TRD Pro um, let's walk this way you have TRD I'm sorry you have a regular suspension mm -hmm. uh, dual uh, tube shocks you have TRD off-road which is Bill Stein correct mm -hmm. then you have TRD Pro which is Fox yep and then you have air springs we have air you, springs uh, let's maybe talk here Actually, all the pros are kind of taken, but we can uh, stand here and okay. kind of show it. And then you have adaptive. Yes. How? That's a lot of options. That's a lot of options, and you, <laughs> for, you forgot TRD Sport. So there, there's a lot of tuning in there, and you know our TRD options are a mid, it's about half of our, our mix. So it's super important for us to meet each customer's need. Sport is more of the on-road handling, off-road, TRD off-road gives you the capability. TRD Pro and going to the Fox and the extra lift and, and changing the components in there is really just adding that high-speed element to the off-road package mm -hmm. in there. And then the adaptive, uh, that's just to make uh, the most premium towing machine that we can put on the market, and the so, adaptive is, is just super cool. So like, for example, that uh, the truck over there on the stage is a 1794, which is kind of your luxury right. top, top, top end, right? So some something adaptive suspension would be on the truck like that? You can get it on that yeah, truck. Yeah. Uh, some customers may choose not to have the adaptive. But the adaptive, you know, we, we've got uh, uh, solenoid controlled valves in the shocks. We're adjusting the ride dampening basically real time as, a, as the information's being fed to the body CU. A lot of terms to say it's adjusting dampening rate constantly and giving you the best ride that it can. And then we put the, the air suspension on the rear of the truck, and that's really to make sure that we're addressing customers' towing need. You know, can you keep that posture of your trucks straight? And so it's, there's an automatic, if you, you put your tongue load in there, you fill the bed up, the truck may uh, change its posture, it's gonna return to a level again. And that helps with our aerodynamics, which is a whole nother story uh, we can spend time on. But uh, it helps with aerodynamics. Or you can operate in manual mode, so if you back up and you wanna drop the back end of the truck down to help load or help put that trailer hitch on, you can do that too. Or like a, like a high mode as right, well. Right, you can li li up and down, yeah. you, you have capability of changing it. So just uh, to wrap up our conversation, um, let's talk about the off-road capability because that was always important, right? Oh. And we, we talked about TRD off-road, uh, TRD Pro. So TRD off-road in the Tundra is a package you can add to different trim levels. Yeah, that, that beautiful uh, uh, 1794 over there has a TRD off-road package on it. Okay. And then if we walk on this side... So I guess one of the one of the elements is the wheel, right? The wheel yes. itself. 
but then you have kind of the meat of it, right? So, um, and for example, Bilstein shocks, you can kind of see the blue. Right. Bilstein monotube shock in there gives us uh, more capability, you know, you get more dampening, uh, both in compression and, and uh, rebound. Yes. In there, so uh, the amount of valving is different, right? And it, it, it gives you a smoother ride and more capability to go places that you wouldn't take a normal truck. And then we've got uh, our forge wheels in there. We've got our forge wheels in it uh, to help with that on the Pro, where we don't, you know, these are aluminum wheels, we have forge wheels on the Pro. So uh, if you're, I'm, I'm sure all your viewers know the difference between a, a cast wheel and a forge wheel, well, a forge wheel is super strong. Super expensive, but super strong. And uh, we changed our tires. This is the Falcon offering. Uh, we've heard people com complain about the current Pro tire. It's not aggressive enough. It's actually a Michelin tire, and uh, I've driven them for years, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in it. It doesn't have an aggressive look, but the capability, capability yeah. is amazing. Yeah. We have a patented tread with Michelin on it. But we changed to a Falcon, and we have a Michelin offering as well uh, that they've made exclusively for us. Uh, to give us a little more sidewall capability out of the truck without the noise that comes along with like the 35s I run on my truck. You know, my, my tires sing, these tires don't sing. And uh, to, to be that good corporate citizen and make sure that we don't uh, violate any of the rules or regulations, you know, this, this is uh, an aggressive offering in the truck. So let's, uh, a few specs on the Pro, right? So it comes as a Crew Max, Crew Cab, a shorter bed, five and a half. Uh, this is kind of the the only way, um, and also it has the i i Force Max yep. hybrid powertrain. Then it's a little bit wider uh, than a regular Tundra yep. because of the offset. Is right. that correct? That is correct. So okay. the the track length is wider, okay. and thus you can see the clearance lamps, which federal requirement. We went over 80 inches, so we have clearance lamps okay. that we put on the truck. Um, they look good, but they're actually there for for our federal. Uh, compliance. So then you have the same power and torque numbers that we discussed already yep. with a 10 speed automatic, all that stuff. Then the tire, the Wild Peak uh, AT, all terrain, um, it's almost like about a 33. Yep. Uh, I did my calculations <laughs> previously. Um, and then um, you have a rear selectable locker yep. now, 2.5 2 Fox yep. um, shocks. Um, but no front locker, is that correct? There's no front locker. Okay. Uh, we, now, we do have limited slip front and rear differentials in there. Uh, the front locker itself in the truck, you know, maybe a few customers need it, but again, we're adding the high speed element to our off-road package. So the real goal of this truck is, is how to, to pre-run or desert run these type of things. Front rocker, locker for, for uh, crawling um, lock, rock climbing, these type of things. You know, our off-road package has has the crawl control and the multi-train select with with the rear locker, but it, we also have limited slip front and rear diffs in there. So pretty much for what a, where a full-size pickup truck can go, we think it does everything that a customer is going to ask it to do. So um, if, if you get into Hell's Pass or something, you know, you're not getting it into Hell's Pass, so <laughs> it's too wide. <laughs> So when one wheel is in the air and loses traction, for example, you can still transfer. We're, we're shifting power yeah. over to the other wheel. Okay. So we call it the bubba jump. You don't ever get the two drive wheels up in the air and you're just sitting there and you got to get somebody on a bumper to shift weight over to get, you know, a wheel on the ground. So our, our philosophy is with our off-roading is how to keep all four wheels on the ground for driving, you know, efficiency. But if the wheels, you're going to get wheel lift, and when you get wheel lift, we are putting power where the power needs to be. So did you update, or did you improve, like, the ground clearance or articulation, all those things? You haven't published those numbers we yet. We haven't published those numbers yet, but yes. Um, the, the travel of the, the suspension has been changed. The ground clearance mm, isn't so much different than it was before. Um, we had best in class. We did improve our departure angle. Our approach angle, we, we made sure that we kept approach angles. And the, and the tough thing now is with aerodynamics, the easiest thing you can do is slam the truck down, right? And it improves your aerodynamics. But if you slam the truck down, then you lose your off-road capability. Can you show me that air dam? Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. take a look. Speaking of aerodynamics. 
this is this is a this is an awesome story. So, as I mentioned, I didn't want to change the approach angle to the truck. We lose our off-road capability yeah. in that. So one of the things we did is uh, we got in the wind tunnel and we started looking. We knew that we needed an air dam, and if you look some the competitors, the air dam is is hangs way down here. And what they say is, well, if you if you um, want to go off road, just unbolt it. Well, being a guy who uses a truck as a truck and being a guy who uh, goes off roading a lot, that wasn't a solution that I gave my engineers. So I've seen that, you know, where the air dam on a lot of the pickups, you know, hangs down here. And sometimes it's extendable, right? Sometimes yeah, not. Yeah, one of our competition has uh, an option for that. Um, but, you know, the last thing I want to do as a customer is unbolt that thing. If I unbolt it, I'm going to throw it in the woods and it's never going back on. So that wasn't an option that I gave to our engineers. My question is, how do we solve this issue? I don't want to give up any off-road capability, but, I, you know, that air dam improves aerodynamics 5%. It's super important. So the solution they came up with is what we call an active air dam. It's back here. This folds down. You can see the rubber seal underneath it here. Yeah. This folds down in, into this area. And when you get to highway speed. So that folds down, it takes the air, directs it around the tires, improves our aerodynamics 5%. But that's not the interesting part of the story. So our, our engineers came back to us and they said, okay, you know, we got this air dam, but we don't know when, you know, our aerodynamics, they spend a lot of time, even areas like this, you see these, these radii, that's all done for aerodynamics and keeping air attached to the vehicle or a separate vehicle. So our engineers came to me and they go, ah, we, we want to buy a, we want to buy a 28 foot trailer. And I'm like, why? You know, we have all sorts of towing trailers. Well, we want to put it in the wind tunnel. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, we don't know what's going to happen. And, and these guys are great. I mean, I love meeting with our aero group because it's like the new frontier of automotive. It, we're learning things every day that we don't know. So they put this, this trailer behind our truck in our wind tunnel, basically took up the whole wind tunnel. <clears throat> They've spent hundreds of hours in there. And what we found out is when that air dam is down and you're towing, and you're keeping that air separated, because now we're taking the air off the back of the, the cab, um, and you don't have the turbulence in the bed and you're coming off the tailgate, we, you get what you call wake, you know, just like a boat wake, and it comes off the back. Well, on a trailer, when it hits that trailer and the wind's coming around it, it creates turbulence. Your aerodynamic coefficient goes down 26% by having that air dam up there. And you're talking Not about a, like a cargo trailer, like a, a box. A cargo, a box trailer, yeah. yeah. So, so they developed the logic in here when you and our system is as you select trailer mode and you select your trailer and put your sun pin in there this will either stay up or stay down to help with the aerodynamics you're basically your your towing fuel economy uh, of doing this um it, it it was a great find the other complaint i had to them is we still have our power back down rear glass yeah. that's 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 tundra heritage we have to have that right that's an engineering feat in itself. That's why no one does it, because of seat belt loads and all these type of things. But I don't ever use it because I live on a farm and I haul, haul hay, and I usually have hay chaff or lots of dust or things in the back. And when you open that window and you're driving down the road, that turbulence back there, you get a back draft and it blows it in the cabin. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than driving with chaff flying around the cabin of your truck. So that was my other challenge in them is you got to get rid of that. Can, right? can we show that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Here in the back. I mean, you're talking about this back glass here. Oh, yeah. This this glass right here coming down. This this is the only truck that the whole back window comes down. Super cool. It's a lot of fun. It is. But highway speeds, you know, if you've got any any garbage back here, it's in your cab. Even, even you know, this is just normal pickup truck stuff. So even a power slider, these type of things, it's got a backdraft in it. So how do you solve that backdraft? And if you look at our, you look, get it back a little bit and you can see the, the roof, there's kind of a, a V section that goes in that roof. Mm -hmm. And it goes right over the chimsel that we made our chimsel, our high mounted stop lamp larger. And we've got our, our, some of our deck lighting in there. 
but we made this as kind of a spoiler. So now we're taking the wind, we're directing towards the center, we're shoving it off, and you see that nice little bump up on the back here? Yeah, right here. Then we have a two-piece tailgate back here. This length is super important. This bump up helps us to take that, that wind and make a wake and eliminate um, basically turbulent air back there. And now there's no, no turbulence in your deck anymore. So you can drive with the window down and there's no wind throbbing going on. There's no um, you know, backdraft where it's blowing debris into the cab. It's, they, they nailed it. It's awesome. And I can see even little elements like this, right? Yeah, Cra crazy story. That's out. tiny. It's tiny. And you look at it and you're like, you're like, uh, we call them aero fin stabilizers, yeah, right but here. it helps stabilize the vehicle. And they're, they're on the mirror. There's some ribs under the mirror. But uh, funny story on this. I got calls from my aero engineers to go to the proving grounds. They wanted to show me something. And uh, so I drive two and a half hours of proving ground. And uh, they give this big presentation of how they can put this wing on a car, on the truck, and it'll help stab stabilize. Like if you've ever been down, driving down the, the highway and you drive past a semi and you get that push yeah, sideways. Yeah, it's like the vacuum. Right, it's like a vacuum. And this helps with that. And they give this big presentation and they didn't show me their design. They just, you know, here's all the numbers, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, I'm going to end up with a wing like this. This is, this is insane, right? Yeah, why am I here? And, and the guy reaches in his pocket and he goes, and this is it. And I'm like, oh, my God, you wasted my whole day. You know, I got to drive back. There's no way this works. I spent four hours on the track putting on, taking it off, putting on, taking them off, driving it. Amazing. Just a little thing like that how amazing it does you yeah. know and these are things that yeah in our race car program we know it even in our past car program but we haven't addressed these type of elements in a pickup truck before and it's it's kind of like the new engineering frontier it's really super exciting at least for an engineer nerd so what like it me. does is it basically kind of helps that v around the truck closer to the body it right kind of hugs it, it right? kind of hugs the body it pulls yeah. that in and the mirror distance of your mirror you know, your, your skull, we call it skull cap on the mirror. That distance is super important. Uh, having some ribs underneath it is super important. And it's really keeping, as I mentioned before, you have some wind that you want to separate from the truck and you have wind that you want to push on the truck. So by holding that on the truck, you're really like, uh, like putting on those, those thunder jackets on a dog, you know, you're, you're holding it in tight mm -hmm. and then the truck doesn't get upset by other disturbances like semis driving past it and that. I don't know, I think that's yeah, super interesting. Yeah, it, is. it is, it is cool. it's, it's a lot of little elements like that that make the difference in, in getting our, our coefficient of drag down, but also helping with act, what the customer's actually gonna see and feel, you know, when they're driving. Awesome, uh, I just wanna close with the interior. Okay. Because, you know, we, we talked about a lot of engineering parts, but all new interior, I mean, how can we forget this? Uh, is it not beautiful? Yeah, so this is a 1794, um, if you're watching this, um, this is a 1794, one of the more premium kind of uh, luxury items, not off-road, spe specialized off-road, right? No, this is more of our Western package. Um, it, it's really designed to meet the guy who has that taste for more of the Heartland State. And then we have our Platinum, which is, is its counterpart, and that's more of an urban truck. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of my truck versus, uh, you know. Uh, this is kind of my, uh, well, maybe the Pro is more a little bit. Uh, well, Pro is and, everybody. Anyways, right? Okay, okay. And, so, and, and this, this is interesting. Now, it has two different colors in here. I, I, this color is, looks great, but I would have it a mess in about five minutes. So mm -hmm. there's a dark chocolate brown interior that goes along with this as well that I think is gorgeous. And then you, I mean, you've proved every surfaces, new design, and then in the center, there's this optional 14-inch uh, uh, infotainment screen. Yep. You have an all-new multimedia system. Yes, right, we do. This truck. You have a digital gauge cluster as well. Uh, I mean, we could spend another episode, uh, another uh, whole hour. Even aluminum pedals underneath there. I, you know, there's a lot of little details in there, and there's a lot of Easter eggs that I would challenge you to find in it. It's, it's things that you know how do you make a more premium feel we got american walnut in it we have uh, the same leather that we're we're putting in some of our lexus in it so it's trying to use premium materials in a way that truly says this is a, a toyota truck so there isn't uh there isn't any 
Um, I, I don't think any gaudiness to it, but really focusing on shapes, focusing on materials, focusing on craftsmanship of, of the interior. And, and that's of course, what this is about. And of course, each grade, like the SR, the base, the SR5, the limited, they all have their own character. They have their own character. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, it, it's, I, I think this is, uh, you know, sophisticated, but still truck light. And um, two more things. Um, so modes is a big change, right? Because you have awesome. different driving modes, not just the crawl control, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but also like the sport, the eco, um, there's a tow haul and tow haul plus. plus. Yep. So there's just kind of the, how aggressive the tow haul is? It, because now with our new electrical platform and we changed the E power steering, electric power steering, um, you know, first when we started the platform, I'm not a fan of, of EPS, electric power steering, not a fan of it. Uh, because when I drive pickup trucks and they have EPS, there's a delay there. And I can't feel, if I'm off-roading, I can't feel where my wheels are. And I don't know where my center point is. There's a bunch in there. The downside of the hydro steering we have always had is we have, tend to have more understeer than what you have and you can do in the EPS. But the new electrical platform, our drive modes are, are tied in. So our EPS is tied in, our transmission's tied in, our powertrain's tied in, um, our braking is tied into the system. So you mentioned tow haul mode, two, two modes. We have a light mode and we have a heavy mode and you pick what type of trailer. Do you have an open trailer, do you have a closed trailer? Pretty simple, there are two, two kit punches on there. It changes the setup of the truck. And like if you go to heavy mode with a closed box trailer on there, I'm changing not only the shift schedule and the throttle mapping, but I'm also changing my steering mapping and I'm changing my brake mapping. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, our whole goal is, do you have to drive the truck or is a truck just enhancing your experience? And this is really about the truck enhancing your experience. I can tow this maximum load I'm not doing every extra work. So even my complaint on our current truck about the understeer when I'm towing, we're using the EPS and the mapping of the EPS to help assist with that understeer. So you don't feel the understeer. And adjust much. for it. And yeah. adjust for it. Yeah. And each mode's different. So when you put an econ mode, well, it does what you want it to do, right? Normal mode is what we have at Calibrated. Sports mode is set up in there um, to give you a little more excitement. And there was one more mode, if you can find it in there, and that's what we call Sports Plus. And that, uh, that's just a lot of fun. We'll just put that in. So there. like acceleration, zero to 60. Yeah, so you're, you're uh, throttle mapping, so you're tipping, you know, being linear, holding a gear longer. Uh, how much even drive force that we're allowing the transmission to have uh, as you're, you're tipping into the throttle. All those things are changing, but it's also changing your braking and it's also changing your steering. So your steering effort changes based on what mode you're in and in the flavor that you want. So anything from mild to wild. <laughs> and so to wrap up, I mean, you've touched every component on this truck, the, the, the chassis, the, the suspensions, I mean, huge changes there. No more leaf springs, the power plants, the interior is all new, the modes. So yeah, I mean, uh, all new truck. I mean, it's, uh, it's truly, it's truly, truly all no, new. I, I don't know if we even have any carryover bolts or nuts in this truck. It's everything is new. <laughs> that it, must have been quite a feat. Um, you know, it, we we change every 15 years, whether we need it or not. Um, but yeah, it it's been a lot of fun, um, and to do it during a pandemic, um, it required us to change the way we develop a truck which is, is interesting in itself because I think in some ways we're actually more efficient. But you put it in, a, in the hands of some good engineers, both uh, design and evaluation, and, and as I said before, actual truck guys. So the guy who calibrated these different drive modes for the multi-train select, uh, he's, uh, he races Porsches, but he also you know, does a lot of off-roading with me. And uh, Steven did a spectacular job on there. Didn't always agree with his tuning, but uh, you know, it, there's enough flavors that everybody can get into it, but excellent. I mean, his driving skills are impeccable. His, his knowledge about you know, chass, uh, chassis tuning is impeccable. It's just, it's a lot of fun to work with people like that. 
I appreciate it. Well, All thank right, you sir. for spending the time. Can't wait for you uh, to drive it. All right. Uh, uh, we'll probably next month. So. Fabulous. There you go. As always, go back to tfltruck.com and tfloffroad.com where we have a lot more detail because as long as we spoke, there's probably things we didn't touch. A lot of things. <laughs> All right. There you go. Thanks.